Hello folks, time for a Red Arrow update. So, since we last saw the Red Arrow, what has changed? Well, there was one interesting thing. The wheel nuts on this side um, had been torqued to infinity foot-pounds and uh, thus needed an infinitely long bar to break them loose. The wheel nuts on this side of the car were finger tight. I could spin them off with my fingers. So that was fun. In the meantime, we've extracted the rear subframe and predictably it's pretty, don't know what the word is, but pretty rusty. Uh, so that is going to need to be taken apart, cleaned up and painted and we're going to have to replace all of these things like these um, ball joints and um, subframe bushes and all of that kind of thing. These mountings here where the um, Oh, the trailing arm pockets are, are, are very badly corroded. This one not so much, but the one over here is completely shot. So I'm going to have to get on to my favourite automaker's parts department and uh, get some of those guys ordered. Also, in terms of other rust repairings, so our um, sills and so forth, uh, I've been shopping and I got myself uh, left and right replacement sills and also from the same company uh, I got left and right um, rear wheel arches. Now actually I think these are probably okay uh, but rather be looking at them than for them particularly at that price. So let's go have a look underneath and uh, see what we have to deal with in here future Damien calling before we get into the little bonus content that we have here for you today first these words from the sponsor of today's video rust does your or the is your E36 rust free? If so, you need rust. Rust is a natural process that is constantly attempting to turn your car into dust. If this is what you would like, then check out the link in the description for the discount code RUST10 and you can save 10% on your next order of rust. Now, back to the video. Right. Since that last clip, a few days passed. And it's very sunny. And I was driving myself crazy, working in the barn, um, working on Volkswagen chargers. So I thought, let's come out of the barn Let's work on the Red Arrow. So we got the old shocks out and got the wet sandblaster going, both under the car and on the subframe, which I'll show you in a minute. But on the more corroded bits and on the seam sealer, got in here with the wire wheel. Whew. So let's go see. Uh, where that has brought us. <sighs> right. Yes. In we go. So, 
All right, time for more dodgy camera work. All right, so. Don't know how any of this crap's gonna come out, but basically underneath where our subframe came out is now basically cleaned down and um, in pretty good shape. The good news is uh, that we've got nothing structurally bad around the um, subframe mounts. So these are our two rear subframe mounts. They're all in very good condition. We've just cleaned them up. That's all they actually needed. Um, the front mounts here are also fine. Oh, we can actually prop you up in here. Oop, ah, oop, ah, no, arg. Bad camera work, Damien. You lose. Alright, so these ones are in good order as well. Structure is good here. We just cleaned them up. Um, around here, on the wall here, we've cleaned this up as well. It's all pretty good. Now, time for the bad news. All right, so these guys are our trailing arm pockets. And they are uh, pretty bad. Not as bad as I thought they were, but they are pretty bad. Um, this one is probably a better of the two. Um, there's no advanced corrosion here in the arm, but up here, in this kind of pipe where I had the charging cable coming up through here. This is pretty bad here. Um, so I'm not sure, there's no point in me trying to weld a plate in here because this is all bad steel here. So I imagine I'm gonna have to cut this part out. So not sure yet, um, but we've good steel here. Just this piece around the pipe is quite bad. Now obviously within the pockets themselves, they're completely gone. So like the internal part of the pocket is just gone. There's nothing in there. Um, again, don't know how this will come out, but hopefully be okay. Now over here on the far side, drag myself over here. This one is actually worse. Uh, this one's worse because this one here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but that's literally just hanging on there by a thread. It's flexing. Uh, so, so this is definitely a cut out job. Uh, but we're in, again, pretty good shape with the surrounding metal. Uh, I've cleaned off quite a bit of the seam sealer, which is why I'm covered in seam sealer. Um, so yeah, we're, we're making progress. Now the good news is, I have these guys, and these are replacements. Uh, that, I don't know which side is which now. That's that side, obviously. Okay, so that is a strengthening plate. Um, so option one is, you could weld in a strengthening plate. Um, and that basically uh, will do what it says on the tin, I guess, and strengthen this thing. Now, option two then is, because we have the cups that come with the plate, and actually I think I will have to do this anyway, and I've got these new um, thingies here for, you know, to replace these things with. So what you would do, I guess, in this case, is you'd have you know, your bolts going in there like that kind of thing. And then this kind of replaces this. Um, and you're kind of guided into place with this. And you're kind of guided into place because this is Kind of cut out to fit there so even if you cut out that entire thing you know you're still going to be able to find your way with this plate and get it back where it's supposed to be so then you have 
you know, that, that guy there on top of that. Um, and that goes in and gives you back your pocket and everything else. So, my gut feeling is that what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this out. Um, I'm going to cut it out. Probably just follow that line there. I'm down around here. Follow this line here. So just cut that out but leave the... Um, but leave the surrounding metal here. I'll have to obviously clean back the seam sealer then. From here and on this part. Um, but then we can, yeah, then we can have all that out of there. We'll have this built up um, on the bench and then it just basically will, what I can do is I can actually drill a couple of locating holes because this is um, this has got holes in it for spot welding. So what I can do is I can actually locate it using the original um, using the original bolts, and then just drill a hole or two here, just even two holes, just to locate it, just to be sure to be sure that I get it um, back in the right spot. Well, yeah, I think it's a good job I got this because uh, we're going to need it. So there you have it folks. Um, seam sealer man. But yeah, good job I got these. Um, these are brilliant. Uh, so we will be oh, losing them in the dirt. Uh, and then, yeah, we're going to get these guys cut out and get them in here. So hopefully in the next episode we'll be able to show you that. And now back to Damien of the Past. So while we're here around the back then as well, we'll be getting rid of this uh, industrial socket and uh, replace that with a proper type 2. It's kind of cringe-worthy now that I look at it, but hey, it did the job. So lastly, what I've decided to do in terms of the powertrain is I'm going to go with this Mitsubishi Outlander uh, generator and the Toyota Prius Gen 3 inverter. Uh, recently, a uh, chap on the Open Inverter Forum, uh, I believe, dynoed one of these and got nearly 90 horsepower out of it, which would be perfect uh, replacement for the 1.7 litre diesel uh, that was in the Red Arrow. So hopefully soon, um, you'll see us getting into that bit of cleanup on the back and then uh, getting into swapping in uh, this guy for uh, powertrain. Really last thing this time. Uh, the other bit of good news on the Red Arrow project is I have sourced a battery. Um, not seen it yet. It is, I believe, <clears throat> excuse me, from a Range Rover hybrid, uh, 14 kilowatt hours. Uh, so it should be a nice match um, for our Red Arrow. Still haven't decided where I'm going on charging uh, yet, but as I say, we're going to go with our Mitsubishi Outlander generator, so front generator, uh, Prius, Toyota Prius Gen 3 inverter, uh, which gives us the DC-DC as well, so that's got that covered off for us. Um, and we will now have a 14 kilowatt hour um, Range Rover hybrid battery. So uh, should have that battery realistically be probably a month, maybe even two months for that turns up here. But just thought I would keep you folks in the loop. So that's it for this kind of quick look around on the Red Arrow project, folks. I do hope that you have found this video boring and uninteresting. And if so, please don't forget to leave a dislike and unsubscribe. As I generally say, do check the links in the description for the Open Inverter Forum, GitHub and things like that. But do not check out the ones for Patreon and PayPal, because with financial support, I'll just end up doing more silly red arrow stuff. So, I'll leave you at that, and 
until next time. Happy solar panel fitting.